Good morning, and it is Wednesday, uh, the 8th of August, and I was looking through my YouTube and thought, God, I haven't made a video in so long. You know, life takes over and um, things just pile up, and uh, I have still been, you know, counseling people online about uh, how to get into ketosis and um, how to manage their weight and things and their health. But I just haven't had time to, to make a lot of videos. Uh, I'm working Thursday through Sunday at Amazon, and um, that takes up a huge amount of time uh, because on the three days I have off, uh, I'm whipped. Um, and I'm in maintenance still. My um, The way I do keto has changed a little bit because... I find it evolves. It's uh, it's not as easy to track macros every day for every meal, and sometimes I miss meals uh, because of whatever issue going on during the day, or sometimes I have a bigger meal than I normally would, or I have more carbs, and um, I find that it all evens out. I'm not consistently in ketosis anymore, and that's okay. Um, you, once you hit your goal weight, uh, you're going to find that if you continue to try and stay in ketosis all the time, you may have a hard time stopping weight loss. And that's what happened for me. I had to kind of even out my... I had to balance my protein and my fats and add in some extra veg in order to keep my weight stable at about 125. If I don't, and if I stay in ketosis, what seems to happen is I drop down dangerously low for me. Uh, you know, I could support probably getting down to 115 or so, but for me, uh, and what I like for my body, that's too skinny. And it makes, I've already got a really kind of angular, skinny kind of face. And it, it deflates my face more. And um, makes my chest, you can see all my ribs through here. And it just doesn't look cute. So um, for maintenance, I do a lot of cycling. Um, not bicycling. But uh, more like carb cycling, I guess you would call it. Now, I am a slave to bread, and I always have been. And I, I will never say that I, I will never have bread again, because it happens. And occasionally I'll go, ah, eh, what the hell, I have a piece of bread. But see, for my body, I can support that. And I've noticed over the past year that my... I'm allergic to bread. I'm just going to tell you that because when I eat bread, I can immediately feel an itchiness. Um, it irritates my GI tract. It makes my joints hurt. I have an immediate reaction to bread. And I always have. I just chose to ignore it. So, um... Now I pay the consequence. When I eat bread, I know what's going to happen. And, and I try to combat it best I can. But uh, I would not suggest that if you are just starting out or if you're trying to stay in ketosis. Um, cheating when you're in the weight loss mode and you're trying to get weight off is not a good idea. Because a lot of times people find that once they start cheating, they get that urge to continue. Oh, this little bit won't hurt. Uh, I'll have a piece of bread here, a cracker there. It all makes a difference. And it'll keep you out of ketosis and you'll be like, oh, I'm stalled. No, you're just not in ketosis because you're cheating too much and your body is using those carbs instead of burning fat. So, um, I think I cured my uh, insulin my insulin resistance by doing a lot of extended fasting, and because I was super morbidly obese, um, 
and I was still insulin resistant even once I lost half my body weight. Like I couldn't eat a carb, I would gain weight. I, I just, I couldn't manage carbs. My body couldn't manage carbs. And it was just from years of overdoing it. Uh, I, I'm a binge eater uh, by nature and I would sit and just eat sugar until you get the sweats. And um, I would do that consistently daily for years. And when I got to my highest weight, I could, I could eat seriously probably thousands of grams of carbs a day. And my body was not managing it well. I was killing myself. So once I had gastric bypass and couldn't eat volume anymore, um, I was still insulin resistant. My body still didn't manage it well. And I did lose a lot of weight through starvation, obviously, because your body goes from eating sh a shit ton of stuff to nothing at all, basically. And then, but once I got to a plateau, I couldn't get any further. I couldn't make my body lose any more weight. It just said, you know, we, we need less carbs. And so once I did the started extended fasting, I broke that that problem. I I went from being insulin resistant to insulin sensitive, and it was hard. Uh, the first few fasts I did were extremely hard. You know, I had to start out slow, and I did a 24 hour fast, and then I did a 48, and then I did a 72, and then uh, I did a week long fast, seven full days. And I really feel like that's what changed things. Something fixed itself in my body. My body kind of went back to baseline. And I, and I, when I started eating again, and I started very slowly, and just adding back in very small amounts of things like avocado and nuts, and I, I allowed my body to go, oh, this is how we're supposed to use insulin. This is you know, how it's supposed to work. And now that I remain mostly keto, I'm not in ketosis all the time, my body knows how to manage carbs again. And so, I mean, that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. I don't have to worry about, I have a big Mexican meal. I get super sick because Mexican. Um, I don't manage MSG well. It's additives and things now that give me a hard time, not insulin. So my, I don't get uh, reactive hypoglycemia anymore. Um, my body knows how to manage carbs in a way that even if I get a big load of them, I don't have that problem anymore. So um, just be aware of that. Um, most of you are probably going for weight loss. And my suggestion is track everything because that's what I did. You know, I started uh, keto, and I think I weighed about 180 when I started uh, keto, and I wrote everything down, right down, I mean everything, my water intake, my food intake, I tracked my macros right to the last gram, I weighed and measured everything because I had a goal in mind, and I wanted it to work the first time. So if you're confused about um, what foods you can have, you know, I, I tell everybody keep it as simple as you can manage it. Simple is best. Don't try to make a bunch of recipes. Um, you can Google Dr. Westman's page four. That's a really good place to start. And um, join some groups, ask some questions. A lot of people are really into making sweets and stuff like that. I found I couldn't manage any of that stuff right in the beginning. I missed bread a lot, so I learned how to make a bread that I could have. Um, but I found that if I ate too much of it, it made me crave bread. It's a, it was a psychological thing because it wasn't bread. It wasn't carbs. I think I just, I, I got into a habit of making bread, having a, like a coconut or a, or a, an almond flour bread, 
Um, and I wasn't realizing that it was actually harming me more than anything. So I stopped making those. Same with the sweet stuff. You know, in the beginning you make fat bombs and stuff like that. Not necessary. Um, just follow your macros, meat and vegetables and oils. And if you can, you know, use those things and make a head, um, that helped a lot too, especially with my binge eating problems, you know, uh, planning, planning ahead. If the night before you can write down on paper, this is what I'm going to eat and this is what time I'm going to eat. If you can manage doing that, which I did at the time, it gives you something to look forward to as well. Like I would eat three meals a day in the beginning. I don't need to, but I needed that structure. And once I got finished with breakfast, I was counting down till lunch. I mean, I was busy and stuff, but I would always had it in mind. You can eat again at this time and this is what you can have. And it gave me something to look forward to. After a few months of that, my body said, you don't need all this food. You're not actually hungry. And then you start paying attention to your hunger signals. And you'll find that I'm not hungry. You know, I don't have that hunger. It might be up here, but you don't have real hunger. If you really examine, you know, growling, empty, hollow feeling that you have when you're actually hungry. Uh, and your body wants something. So you have to kind of, you know, do what works best for you. Anyway, uh, a lot of people ask me about pooping. Can't poop. You know, have problems with constipation. Constipation is really common when you first start keto. And I know I had that issue. Um, and I had to reverse engineer. So what you do is you figure out what you're missing, what will help me get this process started on a daily basis, because you want to become regular, obviously. So for me, I had to come up with a combination. Now, I don't generally, I wasn't eating breakfast. I was cutting that out and doing intermittent fasting and not eating till lunch. But I found that if I did that, I was more constipated. So even with my increased water intake, because you have to remember that water is what moves everything. So if you're drinking, you know, 80 to 90 ounces of water a day and you're still constipated, you have fiber issues. Maybe you're not eating enough vegetables. Um, you know, uh, maybe you need a little help with magnesium. So here's what I do. Drink your water. You got to make sure you drink the water. That's number one. Secondly, I added in a magnesium supplement at night before bed. I think it's only 250 milligrams, so you don't have to do a huge dose because I take it nightly and um, just as a habit. And that helps move things along. Not only is it good for sleep, but it also helps with moving, you know, everything along. You have to make sure you get some salt, too, during the day. A lot of people avoid salt. Salt helps as well with, um, with regulation. Make sure you're getting oils through the day, like uh, olive oil, coconut oil, whatever oil you prefer. Um, if you're not using enough oils, uh, oil can help you with uh, constipation issues. Um, you got to be moving. Uh, you can't sit around all day. You're your body wasn't meant to sit all day. So make sure that you uh, get up, do some stretching. If you're, if you're not exercising, you, you should be walking, doing some stairs, um, move your body. You know where all this stuff is in your central core, so move that. You know, that's what gets peristalsis working. It helps move your lymph. It helps get everything moving. So make sure you're getting some movement during the day. And, um, you know, I make a muffin in the morning that has everything in it that I know that I need to get my body moving. So it has uh, flaxseed meal, chia, uh, hemp hearts, and uh, psyllium husk. Uh, one egg, 
oil, water, and then I add some cinnamon and, you know, a few other little things with a little bit of baking powder, throw it in the microwave. It makes a little muffin that I cut in half and I toast it. And that's about as heavy and fibrous and has a lot of insoluble fiber in it that helps me continue to keep moving. So, um, you have to find what works for you. I can't use coconut flour or almond flour anymore. Um, I don't know what it is about those things. They just make, they give me that brain issue and I just can't have them any, have it anymore. So I try to stay away. I can eat almonds. Uh, I just can't have almond flour. Go figure. Um, and so, you know, that's the biggest question I get asked is about constipation and about, you know, planning out your day. Everybody wants me to make them a meal plan. I can't do that for you because we have different tastes. Uh, people eat at different times. People have different schedules. So if you have a busy schedule, your day is going to look different than my day off, you know, uh, and maybe you feel like you need to go to the gym and exercise. Now, lately, since I started Amazon, Amazon's a really physical, grinding, 10-hour day for me. And so I get a lot of physical exercise at Amazon. I don't need to go to the gym anymore. In fact, on my three days off, the only reason I go to the gym is for heat therapy. I just, I sit in the sauna because, uh, I don't feel like I need to stress my body any more than it's being stressed 40 hours a week. And 10 hours a day of walking and lifting and climbing is just enough for this 50 year old body. So, uh, and I mean, I've maintained all my strength and all my muscle and I'm not worried about it. Uh, so I've cut exercise out traditional exercise at the gym out for now. Um, I'm hoping to get another job that won't be as uh, physically exhausting, which will give me an opportunity to revisit and rework, you know, how my gym time looks. So with that said, uh, a lot of people are buying books on keto. I know where I work. I just, I see books on keto, new ones all the time about, you know, uh, living keto, keto recipe books. I mean, if you go on Amazon, you can probably right now find 15 or 20 books that cover, you know, how to cook keto and whatnot. And I, I don't, like I said, I, I don't, I'm not big on keto recipes only because I feel like it makes you want normal food. Um, the foods that you were eating that were not giving you the result you wanted. So you have to think about that. What's the result you want? How soon do you want it? And what are you willing to do to get there? And if it means um, reworking how you think about food, learning uh, what nutrition labels mean, and learning the physiology of what sugar and carbs and, you know, all the foods that you put in your body, what they make your body do, how that chemistry works. You know, you have to understand when you ingest sugar, it spikes your blood glucose and then you plummet afterwards. You want to try and keep that level. You want, you don't want to activate insulin. You want your insulin to stay as flat as it can stay. That's the best for weight loss. You know, you want, you want the smallest amount of carbs. So your body doesn't have carbs to burn, doesn't have glucose to burn so that it resorts to burning the fat on your body and you have to find that happy medium you know nobody can tell you specifically uh, what those numbers are for you I've learned that over time 
So anyway, uh, I hope y'all are doing well. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, post them either at my Facebook page, Keto is Life. Um, you can also follow me on Michelle Chapman Facebook page or uh, just post it to the bottom of the video. Like, subscribe. Uh, I try to post videos now, you know, when I get the chance. Um, we're in the process of designing and building a house. We won't be living in the trailer for forever, unfortunately. Uh, I don't mind it, but my husband's not a big fan. So, um, I'm busy and um, waiting to hear to see if I, you know, uh, get this new position. Fingers crossed. So, I have a great day and I will talk to you all later. Bye.